Hello, everybody. Welcome back to What's Culture Football. You are now joining myself, Gareth Morgan, and Andrew Pollard for our Premier League preview show series thing in the Bob thing that we are doing right now coming into the new Premier League season and today's teams that we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at Everton and we're going to be looking at Fulham so any Tony Khan fans out there we got you covered so first and foremost we need to talk about Everton Andrew we need to talk about Everton it's it's been a weird old time hasn't it over the last season or so we've had Carlo Ancelotti suddenly come in and the teams were, were they were circling the the relegation drain at one point like during last season um, now, coming into this season, what positions do you reckon Carlo Ancelotti needs to address coming into this season? Well, they've, they've already moved to uh, to bring in well, three midfielders, it seems. that The, the Allen deal uh, got, got finalised this morning. James Rodriguez coming in from Real Madrid. Uh, and also, it looks like a Dulé Decore from, uh, from Watford is going to happen. So the midfield is looking pretty good to me. Um, and I mean, if you're looking at what they need to address now, I think... To me, I, I feel like I rant about him all the time, but I think if if they want to do anything, then Jordan Pickford, nah, mate, no. Um, I just I think that the goalkeeper situation, if Everton really want to push on in the next year or two, I think they need to replace Jordan Pickford. Mm-hmm. Um, he's decent, but I think if you're 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 aiming high, he's not decent enough. Um, maybe I think maybe somebody in the the wide positions because um, the way that Carl Ancelotti normally tends to set up is a lot of the time he plays with a four four two, but he has the the wide midfield is kind of tucking in and it's relying on the fullbacks getting outside and somebody sitting deep in the midfield, which is I imagine would be what Alan will do. So maybe they need someone out wide, really, because to me, I'm looking at it and you've got Theo Walcott, you've got Alex Awobi, uh, Bernard as well, and they're all OK. But again, I think it depends if, if Everton have got serious aspirations of of maybe pushing on for Europe this season. I think maybe they could do with a, a wide player and... Maybe another centre half or uh, someone on the right back. Sidibe's gone gone back to uh, to Monaco after his loan spell, so you only got, really got Seamus Coleman there. I know Mason Holgate can fit in at right back, but I think there's still a few p- spots where Carlo could, well, could strengthen. But I think already the transfer window has been a really positive one for for the air for the Toffees. Yeah, so in midfield, I think that is an area of that team that massively needed strengthening. Um, they had yeah. a lot of aging players in that midfield. Uh, just some players that weren't quite clicking. You had your, your Fabian Delfts in there. You had um, Sigurdsson as well. They've, yeah. they've been, they've done a job. Like you can't knock them. They've done a job, but no real class. Right now you've got Decore coming in. You've got um, James Rodriguez potentially coming in as well, and Alan. And it's yeah, that midfield suddenly looks like. A European potentially challenging squad in midfield, and I agree with you in terms of the the, the centre back situation. I feel like Keane. He got, last year, I think he got over a few of the mistakes that he had in the season before when he was looking like a bit of a calamity. Um, I, I feel like he's a bit more stable now. Mina's looking like probably a first choice, and Holtgate probably is first choice as well at centre back. When you're going to pair those two together, in my mind, I, that's what I do. But again, like you said, there's not really a top class player in there that's got the experience when times get tough. Do you know what I mean? A lot of those players have just been brought in like from teams. I think Mina came, didn't he come from Barcelona? He did, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the back of the, the World Cup. But yeah. Barcelona kind of bought him and then sold him about six months later at a profit because of that World yeah. Cup. Um, yeah, and it's one of them. He didn't get the chance necessarily to work with that team to gain that experience. So mm. they've not got, I think... Somebody like potentially if Thiago Silva was still on the market would have been brilliant for Everton because it's just a player. It's it's exactly why Chelsea have signed him just to bring in that experience, that that know how certain situations. I think they need that. Um, you've got um, obviously I think it's Maurice Keane as well or Keane. I always yeah. forget how to pronounce yeah, his name. Right? He's there's a lot of talk of him potentially leaving on loan. So that again that makes that striking situation look a little bit thin because Richarlison's done a job and Calvert Lewin's done a job. They both got 13 goals, I believe, last year. Yep. But you gotta think where if you want to be really challenging the top of that table, you need a consistent striker who's gonna get your goals. So there's there's a lot to think about. But in terms of running, uh, potentially going for a European run, um, or at least breaking into European places this year, what what do you think Everton are gonna be able to do? Do you think they're gonna be able to challenge? Um, I, I think so. I mean, you don't bring in a manager like Carlo Ancelotti just to aim for mid-table. Um, I, this is a guy that's won Serie A, won the Premier League, won the Bundesliga, um, and probably other trophies that I'm, I'm mistaken and we've forgotten. A couple of Champions Leagues at Milan as well. So he's he's a winner. He's there. They've persuaded him to to join Everton because clearly they've said that they're going to back him. I think the 
the fact that personally they, they went after James Rodriguez just because Carlo said so, I think that's a big signal of intent uh, and backing for the manager. So I think realistically, yeah, they, they've got to be pushing on for, for Europe. Um, but when you're looking at, can they get to the top six, seven spots? I think that's realistic. But I, I just think maybe they need one or two more um, bodies in before the deadline. For it, the transfer window... What was it slams shut? Yeah, before then, but I, yeah, you, you look at it, and I think there's there's a good basis there. There's some good youngsters there. I mean, you talked then about uh, about Dominic Calvert Lewin and, and Richardson, both still 22, and they they seem to link up really well at times last season. Um, you've got Jared Branthwaite coming through, played a few games towards the end of the year after the restart, and he's only 18. Anthony Gordon is mm-hmm. 19, got a few games as well towards the end of the year. So there's there's that side of things, and then they've also got Gabamin to come back in, who they signed last season for. 25 million ish, and then he got injured after I think two games, and that was that. So, that could be like a new sign in in midfield as well. So, mm. there's, there's lots to look forward to, Everton. I think, yeah, I'd fully expect that they, they should be uh, charging for Europe, and I, and I think they, they will be. Well, yeah, I, I to be honest, I, I fully agree with pretty much everything you said there. Uh, the big, the biggest thing, <laughs> the, the biggest thing with Everton, I feel like, in terms of them progressing, I think, like you said, they've got a lot of players in that team that have. They're quite young. There's time to tap the potential. If anybody is going to do that, Ancelotti probably is one of the best managers on the planet on his day. He's probably going to be able to do that. But in between the sticks, you've got Mr Pickford, like you said, who's probably not the most... He's not a top, yeah. top class keeper. Could they potentially go in for Kepa at Chelsea? Oof, um, oof. To the keeper who he wants out, from, from by all accounts, and Chelsea seem like... I know Czech says something about him staying like sticking put and everything, but I think Chelsea wouldn't mind getting rid of him for the right price and bringing in. I think they mm. want to bring in Mendy from um, uh, Rene. Ren, I think I think it is Rene. That's something you take when you've got to have <laughs> not Rene. Um, so yeah, could Kepa potentially fill that hole? I mean, that's that's a bit of a swerve if I see there, bro. Uh, I like that from left field because, especially, every, well, Chelsea seem like they want to get rid. Uh, they've been looking at pretty much any goalkeeper on the planet. Uh, Nick Pope's uh, rumoured with him. Andre Onana, Ajax has been linked with him. Uh, Jan Oblak, of course, has been linked with him, but that would take a whole wedge of cash to get him, and Chelsea already spent a lot of money. So, yeah, they're definitely looking for to upgrade on Kepa. Um, and the other side of that, would Kepa be an upgrade on Jordan Pickford? I think he probably would be, yeah. but again, you go going, going from one error prone goalkeeper to another if you're Everton, if if that's the way. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Nick Pope mentioned there. I think that would be a great option for anybody really right now. I think he's a really really top goalkeeper. I think if you look at the England goalkeepers, to me, I don't know. I'd say to me, Pickford's probably in the top five, but. I don't think he's in the top three England goalkeepers out there at the moment. You look at Dean Henderson, Nick Pope. I'd take Tom Heaton uh, when he's back fit. I'd, I'd take Ben Foster over Jordan Pickford. Um, I mean, that that could be a shout. I mean, and he's experienced Ben Foster. He's, yeah, okay, you can look at it and say he's 35. He, maybe he's going to be winding down his career in the next few years. But on the other side of that, he's an experienced goalkeeper that's proven at Premier League level. He had this big move to Manchester United that maybe didn't quite work out for Well, it didn't work out for him. But... I think with that, I I don't think he was really ready for that stage because at Manchester United, sometimes a goalkeeper, you can go eight, nine minutes with doing nothing. And I, it's all about being mentally turned on. I don't think Foster at that time was... He, he's one of those goalkeepers that's better when he's got lots to do. And at Everton, he would have things to do. Um, and I think that could be a, an inspired signing for him, at least as a, a stopgap for a year or maybe two years while you, you look at another goalkeeper out there. But yeah, um, it's with Kepper as well, how much it's going to cost and... Yeah, That's, I mean, he's what the, the most expensive goalkeeper in world football at like 80 million, I think it was, that Chelsea paid for him. So even though Chelsea won't rid of him, they, they're going to want, you'd imagine, at least maybe 60 million for him. Um, maybe even more. Depends how much of that money they want to make back. And if I'm Everton and I'm looking to spend that sort of money on a goalkeeper, I'm probably not looking at Kepa. That's a good point. That's a fair point. So we, we will see. <laughs> we will see in terms of the keeping situation, yeah. what unfolds at Everton. But enough, enough of the Merseysiders. So let's go down south. We need to talk about one of the newly promoted sides. Obviously, we're talking about Fulham, the Tony Khan FC. We're going to talk all about them. Um, are they, I know this is quite a bitter way to start this, obviously, because it's, it's a great way. It's a great thing that they come up to the Premier League and find a way to return. But are they technically relegation favourites, would you say? 
yeah, I, I think you you have to look at them in the mix for uh, yeah. I think it's going to be um, a dog fight for Fulham this season. I, I think it's it's like you said, it's great to see them back in the Premier League. Uh, Scott Parker did a really good job in his his first full season in management there to get that side promoted through the playoffs last season. And yeah, I think even the most optimistic of Fulham fans right now they they snap your hand off for what. 17th place in the Premier League at the end of the next season. So I think, yeah, they, they're they definitely in contention if you look at it, who's favourite to relegation, unfortunately, for Fulham fans. But, I mean, they're in with a, a chance of staying up. It's just, I think it might be, I don't know, I, I think it might be a big, well, it will be a very big ask, I think, for them to, to stay in the Premier League next season. But stranger things have happened. Yeah, and I think it's not making the same mistakes they made last time where they just, mm. they, they did what Aston Villa did last year. Yeah. And it almost didn't work out for Aston Villa. It's that thing of just splurging money, going, oh, these people are on the market, everyone's in for them. Okay, we'll just get them and figure out how they fit into our, squ- our squad later. Yeah. They need to build on the players that were successful for them last year. You've got your, your Ivan Cavaleros, your Mitrovic's, uh, Tom Carney, players like that who did so well yeah. for them in the championship. And just give them a bit of space. Yeah, bring in some quality, some Premier League level quality. It's going to help reinforce the squad and give a bit of depth to your squad because you find that a lot of promoted teams don't necessarily do that. They don't really bring in the reinforcements, really. Yeah. That's yeah. What tends to happen. I think also they've got the continuity as well. They've already made some signings, but, but they've been players that have been on loan that they now turn those, those loans into permanent deals with Harrison Reed from Southampton and Anthony Knockhart running from Brighton, both who were pivotal to Fulham's success last season and they're now permanent there. Um, they brought in Anthony Robinson from Wigan who had that bizarre moment in the what the January transfer window, which feels like about 12 years ago now. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's this, this year, man. Um, but yeah, the, Anthony Robinson who nearly went from Wigan to AC Milan in January, which was bonkers um, and that fell through the last minute unfortunately but they've signed him uh, from Wigan so that's that's a, a big signing Josh Onoma I, I think it's a big mm-hmm. season for him having not quite made the grade at Spurs and dropping down to the championship This it's a big year for him Tom Kearney you mentioned there is key to so much what they do and I think he he disappointed a little bit last time when, when they were in the Premier League where people expected a lot from him and he maybe didn't deliver Mitrovic is just always fun to watch because He's mad. He's a bit of a mad bastard. Yeah. He just, you're, you're either going to get a hat trick or you're going to get a red card and a, and a massive brawl. Um, but I think he's, this is well. He's a discount Costa, discount Diego Costa. <laughs> That's a really good way to look at it. Yeah. Um, but I think a big one is probably Michael Hector, who is now 28. And he, God, it must be five, six years ago now when he got his big move from Red into Chelsea. And everybody was thinking, like, oh, that's a, who, who's this young centre half? And then he'd never, even, I don't think he even kicked the ball for Chelsea. It was just loan spell after loan spell after loan spell. And then he, he signed for Fulham in, in January. Um, I thought he was really good at the Fulham games that I saw towards the end of the season. I think, again, it's another one where you've got players here where they've maybe been in the Premier League and not quite, I don't know, not quite made it, as it were. Um, or they they just yeah been awful and now they've they've got this chance this second crack at it and Michael Hector Tom Kearney um, like Mario Lamina as well from Southampton mm-hmm. could be a shrewd bit of business because there was a spell where he was looking really good about like, eighteen months ago and if they can get him back playing well then yeah but it's it's a real test for Scott Parker I think it's it's a proper uphill battle for him yeah and Fulham for me they're one of the 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 let, let's say the OG teams from my youth when I think of uh, the Premier League growing up and they were just a team that were always there and for the longest time with Villa they've been just just on the edge just in and out and it's you'd like to see as somebody who appreciates the old days and likes a bit of nostalgia you'd like to see Fulham stick around for a little bit and just have those another big London club in the Premier League and fingers crossed they do well this year um, we don't like seeing any club quickly relegated back down because it's just a bit sad so mm. fingers crossed Tony Khan FC do really well uh, but yeah that has been our, our Premier League preview for Fulham and Everton uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below what you think Fulham need to do to avoid relegation who you think Everton potentially need to bring in if they need to bring in any more signings to go with the likes of the Corey Hammers and Allen if they all do let's fingers crossed get into the squad and come in uh, let us know what you think of all that. I have been Gareth from What Culture Football. You can find me at what at gmorgan04 and <laughs> What Culture Football as well. Where can they find you, Andrew? Uh, you can find me at Cultured Left Peg. Amazing. Uh, have the best day possible. Do not forget to like, share, and click on that old subscribe button. And we will see you very, very soon. <laughs> <laughs>